Paul, when we talk about the Big Bang, what happened 14 billion years ago and the evolution of the universe, it to me is the most exciting thing I can possibly imagine. But I have many very smart friends who think it absolutely, totally irrelevant what cosmologists do. Hmm. Now, <laughs> find new friends. <laughs> <laughs> what meaning can cosmology really give to humanity? I think that cosmology tells us a lot about the laws that uh, govern the universe. It's the place where they play themselves out and issues like did the universe have a beginning and what it's going to be, what is it like in the future? Um, uh, is the universe the same everywhere or do we live in some special place? I think these are issues that have a lot to do with the, the meaning of our existence. I think uh, they've historically been associated with uh, the, what it's all about. What, what, what is the meaning of our existence? I mean, if you think about art, literature that explore the human condition, that, that have a great genius behind it and great insight. But what cosmology does is it unifies the, the approach of science to give hard information, but dealing with some of these most fundamental issues. Yes, you're right. So we live in a world which is governed by some kind of physical laws so that's, that we've learned over the course of the last uh, several thousands of years. Uh, but we don't have a global picture of how that fits into the big story, the whole universe. And the only way we can explore that scientifically is through the science of cosmology and trying to find the relationship between the laws that we study in the laboratory and the degree to which they help explain what we see in the, in the large and what, to see if they fit together and if they fit together say you can imagine one possibility together where they fit together in one nice neat beautiful way to give a, a beautiful uniform simple story to the universe and you can imagine another extreme in which uh, the laws of physics actually vary randomly from place to place, and what we observe has nothing to do with what you'd observe if you were someplace else, and, and, and we're, we're kind of a random accident. And both those, both those extremes are in play in cosmology at the moment, and what we hope to do uh, through a combination of experiments and observations and theory, mathematics, to determine which of these, which of these two stories about the universe in its entirety is correct. It is said that cosmology enables us to do experiments uh, by looking back in the past mm -hmm. at energy levels that would be absolutely impossible, almost in principle, for human beings ever uh, to, to create in a laboratory. Uh, that's right, Robert. So the temperature of the universe today is around three degrees above absolute zero on average. But if you extrapolate back in time, it, it was hotter and hotter as it became more and more compressed as we go back in time. And hotter means more energy. When matter collides, it collides with higher energies. So eventually you get back to a time where the energies and temperatures were so high that we can't even reproduce those in the most powerful accelerators we can construct on Earth. So the cosmos as a whole can provide information, sort of fossil evidence of eras when the temperature and energy were so highly concentrated that we can't test them in the laboratory but we can observe their remnants in the cosmos. And as you look further out into space, you're effectively looking back into time. That's right, that's right. And so we can, essentially we're taking, we're getting um, sort of uh, slices of time history going back in time the farther back we go. And then theory sometimes allows us to even push back much farther. Mm. That's to say, we'll see some fossil remnant, we'll say, we see the remnant at a given time, but we know it couldn't have been produced then. It had to be produced, say, in the first instance after the Big Bang or maybe even before the Big Bang in order to explain its existence. So, so we look at the human condition, which all great art wants to do, uh, which humanity has always treasured. So the great art of cosmology puts human beings then in, in their proper perspective, uh, not only in space, because we see this enormity of space, but in, in time and in this, this, this cauldron of, of energy fluctuations, all of this we find our place. That's right, and we don't yet know our place. Uh, there was, we don't know which story is correct. For example, we've just recently discovered that the expansion of the universe is speeding up, and so that instead of the universe becoming uh, uh, populated with more and more complex structures, it's now going to begin to empty out. 
one possibility is that that's the ultimate fate of this piece of space that we observe. It will just become an empty vacuum, end of story. Other possibilities that some of us are exploring is that, no, it will be reinfused with ma new matter and radiation, and there will be new galaxies, stars, and uh, planets, and people. And so our place in time is uncertain at this, at this moment. And the interesting thing is that these profound questions can be explored experimentally and, and through astronomical observation. We don't just have to discuss them across the table, mm -hmm. these interesting ideas. But each of these ideas has different predictions that we can then go out and test. And that's the adventure that we're engaged in at the moment. Is it the case that the more we discover in cosmology, in every aspect, the more we see the diminishment of the human participation in the cosmos? That's an, that's an interesting question. I think it depends upon what our place in, in the history of the universe turns out to be. Um, if it turns out that the universe is just headed towards empty space, empty vacuum, I, mean, I guess I view that as a rather dismal future. Uh, it was something that Einstein thought was uh, impossible, that nature would never allow the possibility of, of, of a beginning, a nothingness to begin with, or a, noth a space filled with nothing at the end. He just thought that was an impossible solution to nature. So he certainly had a strong philosophical point of view, and I share it. Um, and, the other, and the alternative is that, no, we're just part of an evolutionary process. But that evolutionary process is on a much longer time scale than we imagined. We imagined it on the time scale, well, in the old days of thousands of years. Uh, we learned over the course of the last century, no, it was maybe 14 billion years. But maybe that's wrong. Maybe that's just since the last bang, and the universe has been evolving for a much longer period of time. We're part of a much longer you know, uh, cycle of evolution. So I don't know the answer, but I know the way to find the answers is by doing experiments, doing observations, and studying the, uh, mathematically the laws of physics. It would seem that either of those possibilities, whether the universe will expand forever into effective nothingness, or whether we go through cycles that destroy everything and recreate everything. And in either one of those cases, the position of our little species of humanity is very, very, very small. Well, Robert, I, I can't say for sure. It all depends upon um, uh, which of these ideas turns out to be correct. So for example, one possibility we discussed is that um, we exist now, but the universe is now going to be dominated by dark energy forever, and it's just going to become empty vacuum. And then I have to say that uh, the whole thing seems rather pointless to me. We've gone from nothingness to somethingness and then to nothingness again. Uh, the other idea that the universe goes through cycles, well, I'm less sure what happens there. Maybe I'm more optimistic. Uh, it could be that this species, uh, either directly or through evolution, eventually leads to species that figure out how to either survive through the next bang or at least send information through to the next bang so that, um, uh, so, so that, so that there is a, a sort of more connectedness to the history of the cosmos. Now, the but the interesting thing is that we can actually decide between these two points of view in the next few years through, through improvements in experiment and observation and in our understanding of the laws of physics.